Good morning. Welcome here. Happy New Year. Uh, my name is Jeff, uh, along with Sam Whitehawk, one of the pastors here at Grace Evergreen. And I'm so happy, excited to be able to open up the Word of God with you this morning and to look at what it says on this first Sunday of 2022. So we are going to conclude our series that we've been doing over the Christmas season over Advent called Fear Not, where we've been looking at uh, just the first couple chapters of the Gospel of Luke. So this morning, we're going to look at a, at a story in, in chapter 2 of Luke that sometimes is, it seems to be forgotten about. Uh, not a lot of people talk about the story, doesn't get the doesn't get the hype that Mary and Joseph get, or even uh, Zachariah and Elizabeth. It's kind of the forgotten story, and I. But it's really interesting. It's the story of of Simeon that we're going to find in Luke chapter two, when Jesus was was presented, was brought into to the the, the temple, and and Simeon finds him. So, what I love about it is it's a story of of fulfilled promise. It's a story of 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 hope. It's a story of uh, trusting trusting God. And in all these things, we're going to see these, all these things, these ideas, these things kind of play out in our story this morning. And, and maybe you're, you're here this morning or you're listening uh, to the, the video at some point, and maybe you can, you can relate to this. Um, maybe you're, you're trusting God for something as well. You're, you have your hope in something and you're, or you're waiting for something. See, Simeon is a story of, of, of waiting. Uh, maybe something's waiting for a long time and maybe you're, you're waiting for something as well and it just hasn't happened yet. And so... That's what we're going we're gonna to look at this morning. And we're going to look at this idea of, of, of the fear, maybe the fear of waiting, or, or sometimes maybe the fear of, of, of God's timing. And what I mean by that is when sometimes we, we have to wait because God's timing is often different than our timing, isn't it? When we have something in, in mind for ourselves and we, we have everything kind of set up, we, 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 we have prayed about something and we think it's going to happen in a certain way, but it doesn't happen that way. So maybe you can relate to that. And so that's what we're going to look at this morning. And it's, uh, it's a hard one because I'm sure we've all had to wait. We've all had to wait for something to happen. And, and maybe when it, when it doesn't happen, we start to doubt a little bit, start to wonder what, what's going on, God, what is happening in this? And so that's what we're going to look at this morning. So if you have your, your Bibles or if you have a, uh, your phone, maybe it's on an app, I, I do want you to turn there because I think it's important that we all Look at the, the passage as we're going through it together. So if you could, it'll be on the screen as well, but it, it's, it's, I love when people have their own Bibles and I see them looking through it and highlighting stuff and looking stuff up. So um, we're going we're gonna to look at Luke chapter 2, verses 22 to 35 this morning. But before we, we dig in and dive in, I'm just going to pray for us and then we can start from there. So let's just pray together. Heavenly Father, just so grateful for your word. Ah, I just love that we, we can read your word, we can hear your word uh, spoken and just grow in it. So, Father, would you open our eyes this morning? Uh, would, you, would you teach us? Would you, we just see you in this? Would we grow in our love for you by what you have for us this morning, God? So just open our hearts and teach us this morning. Amen. So our passage is going to start out. Uh, Jesus has already been born, so that has already happened, and his parents are now bringing Jesus to the temple, um, or bringing him there. So let's read our first two verses, uh, Luke chapter 2, verses 22 to 24, say this, And when the time came for their purification, according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it was written, the law of the Lord, every male who first opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord. And to offer a sacrifice according to what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. So what is happening here is Mary and Joseph are, are presenting or bringing Jesus, presenting him to, to God. And this was to be done according to the law. So they're following the, the, the Jewish customs. They're following what was required of the law that every firstborn male, the very first one to, to be born will be called holy to the Lord is what it says. So they are doing what is required of the law. They're following the law here. According to the law, this was to be done. And I, from what I read, what I understand, Jesus was probably about 40 days old. So he's, he's, he's still pretty new, uh, 40 days old, but this is what happened when they're 40 days old. So they brought him specifically to present him to the Lord, to be, have him presented there. And so as well, there's, there's a, a, a law for, for Mary of regarding ceremonial purity. So something that has to happen after childbirth, she has to be made 
pure again. So this is one of the requirements of childbirth here. And they're completing these, this, this law purification. We'll find out a bit about that actually in Leviticus. Leviticus 12 verse 8 says this, And if she cannot afford a lamb, then she shall take two turtle doves or two pigeons, one for a burnt offering, the other one for a sin offering, and the priest shall make atonement for her, and she shall be clean. So this is not, a, not really a, a, an atonement early for, for, for sin, but this is more of like a symbolic restoration of, of purity. This is a, a, a sacrifice is essentially for, for Mary after childbirth. And so there were, that's why they're in the temple to do these kind of things. There was also these specific prayers that were needed to be made on the priests on their behalf. And so we're told that the sacrifice that they brought was, was two turtle doves and a partridge and a pear tree. So they bring these, these in, not the partridge and the pear tree, just two turtle doves. So they, they, they bring this in, but this is according to the Jewish custom. This is the minimum requirement of what they, they could bring in. So Mary and Joseph really are like the poorest of the poor. They have nothing. They've traveled a long way from Nazareth to Jerusalem with their newborn and their sacrifice. And so it tells us that the firstborn um, would be made holy to the Lord and would need to be presented to the temple. This was uh, something that was a requirement. Uh, We see this in Exodus chapter 13. I'm not going to read the passage. It's on the screen, but you can see that Exodus chapter 13. And so Mary and Joseph knew the law. This is all the requirement of the law and all the teachings. The firstborn would be, would be holy to the Lord. And I, what I love about reading even the Exodus passage as we read this, which the firstborn is presented. And as we read this, we have these hints and in, in these echoes, these reminders of, of what happened in, in Exodus, the Exodus account when, when the, the Israelites painted blood on their, on their doorsteps and the firstborns were, 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 were killed um, of the Egyptians. And so with, there's this reminder of this, of, of, of exactly who God is. And so presenting the firstborn just reminds us of that. So their visit to the temple had these two purposes. It's to provide a sacrifice for, for Mary to be made clean and to present Jesus in the temple as, as the firstborn. Now I say all of this, um, this kind of give this background to give you the reason for why they are in the temple. So Mary and Joseph being, being Jewish people are, are following the law. They're following what is required in the law. This is what they are called to do. This is what they are supposed to do. So they're, they're doing what they're supposed to do. That, and that brings them to the temple. So they're in the temple. They're doing all of these things. Now let's look at our next few verses. because It really sets the scene for what, what happens next. And so let's look at, and we're uh, introduced to Simeon now. So look at verses 25 to 26. 25 to 26 say this. Now there's a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And this man was righteous and devout waiting for the consolation of Israel and the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And so similar to uh, Zachariah and Elizabeth, we looked at this uh, a few weeks ago. We don't know a lot about Simeon. We're not told a lot, but we are told that he was righteous and devout. Isn't that interesting? I, I love that, that maybe people don't know much about them at all, but we're told that he was righteous and devout. That's what it says in scriptures about him. We're also told that the Holy Spirit was upon him. And this is an important aspect. And we're going to look at this a bit more as we, as, we, as we continue, but that's an important aspect. And it was revealed to him, it says, that he, wouldn't, that he would not die until he saw the Messiah. So this is kind of all that we know about, about Simeon. So he's in the temple. Now, and now, at some point it says as well that it was revealed to him that he would see the Messiah. That the Holy Spirit had revealed to him that, it, that he would not taste death uh, until he saw the Christ. Now we're not told when this happened, but I think I, when, I, when I look at the scripture, when I look at the passage, my understanding is that probably he had to wait for this. Now it doesn't, again, it doesn't say that, but we're going to see later on that he looked like he was probably a lot older when this finally happened. And so I think, I think, I'm going to assume that Simeon had had to wait for this to happen. So he had this promise that he wouldn't taste death until he saw the Messiah. So he had to, had to wait a while for this to happen. In verse 25, it says that he was waiting for the consolation of Israel. So we get this idea of, of waiting for something to happen. So this was the promised Messiah. Simeon was, was waiting for the consolation of Israel. The, this, this comfort is what this word means. This, this joy to come when salvation 
would be realized. He was waiting along with the rest of the Jewish people. He waited, but he waited differently because he waited knowing that he would see the Christ. He was told that he would, he would actually see them. See, in the Old Testament scriptures, the, the prophets, they, 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 they prophesied of one to come. That's how they, they knew that, that Jesus would come. A Messiah, this promised one was going to deliver Israel from their, her enemies and establish this reign of peace and security. See, for most Jews, this, this consolation or comfort, this relief from Israel was they were waiting for a political deliverance, right? They were waiting to be re, you know, relieved from the, the oppression that they felt. They'd been oppressed for probably 700 years. They'd been subjected to all these foreign powers that were around them. They had the, it started with the Babylonians, then the Medes and Persians, then, then the Greeks with you know, Alexander the, the Great, and, and now currently they were the Romans. So all these oppressors had been around them for so long. They were waiting to be released from this, waiting for, for peace. So Simeon was waiting, hopefully, faithfully waiting for a savior to come as well. See, but the difference for Simeon, like we said, is he, he knew he would come, but he was also told that he would see this savior. His eyes would see the savior. You can imagine how this must have felt for him, knowing that he would get to see him, that he would get to see the Messiah. So Simeon waited. He waited, trusting God to fulfill his promise, knowing that God would fill, but longing to see the promised Messiah. Let's keep reading in our passage, verses 27 to 29. They say this, And he came in the Spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms and blessed him and said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. Stop there. So we've already been told that, that Simeon was, was full of the Holy Spirit. That's one of the words that it described of him. Right? He was righteous and devout and he was full of the Spirit. And now it says that Simeon, he came into the temple full of the Spirit, verse 27. So before we continue, I think there's something that that we, we can't just miss here. And I think that Luke is, is really specific in including it. There's two times now in this short span that he's, he's mentioned the Spirit, that the Holy Spirit was upon Simeon. And I think what Luke wants us to know here is that all of this happens through the Spirit. This isn't, this isn't man's wisdom. This isn't isn't, you know, Simeon just being so smart and righteous on his own that he just knew that that was the Messiah. Simeon was full of the Spirit. And that day, he, he, was, he went into the temple just full of the Spirit. So Luke here is just giving the credit to the Holy Spirit doing its work. All of this happened because of the Spirit, the Spirit of God through all of this, led all of this. The Spirit of God has full credit here for what is happening. And, and Luke wants us to see that, that it was through the Spirit that this happened. Now, the, the account here is, is not very long. It's actually quite short. So we're not exactly sure how this happened or even I would love to know the conversation that, that Simeon had with, with Mary and Joseph when he recognized the baby. Because he doesn't say much at all. Basically, he says he came into the temple and then verse 28 says, then he took him in his arms. So we're not sure what happened. If he just walked up and he did, he just grabbed the baby from them. Did he, did he, did he bribe them with something? I, I, we're not, we're not, we're not, not sure. I would love to know that conversation. But what we do know is that Simeon now is able to hold Jesus. He gets to hold Jesus. So he's holding Jesus. And it's, remember, through the Holy Spirit that he recognizes this baby as the fulfillment of what had been prophesied years ago. See, he knew that this was the promised one. This was the, the consolation of Israel. This was the one they had waited for. This is the comfort they'd been waiting for. The one that was promised that, that he would see with his own eyes. See that For him, that day had finally come. The Spirit had showed him that this was the Christ. That he had finally seen him. And you can imagine the excitement for Simeon that he must have felt. And I, even for Mary and Joseph, you know, for them, this would have been a, just a confirmation of everything that they were told. They, they, were, they, were, they were told all these things by the angels. This would have been a confirmation of everything of who they believed Jesus was going to be. So as Simeon holds the baby, I, 
I just love what he says. He just, he praises God. See, Simeon's hope is finally realized and at this, this pivotal moment. See, the Holy Spirit had revealed to him that he wouldn't see death until he saw the Messiah. So he waited for this moment, not knowing what it would come, but trusting that it would. Now he sees this young couple come in, right? They're from Nazareth and they're going through the, the, the purification stuff. They're going through the, the dedication, the presentation stuff. They're going through all of the law stuff. And Simeon comes into the temple that day, just full of the spirit. And he, and he sees this baby and he knows through the spirit right away that that's the Christ. That this promised Messiah is here and it's in that baby, the baby that is wrapped up that he's holding. It's finally here. He saw it. Look, look what he says first, though, in verse 29. Now I can die in peace. Let, let, let your servant depart. You're letting your servant depart in peace. Anyone here have a bucket list? Anybody have a bucket list of stuff that they want to they do, they want to accomplish, maybe be, be, before they die? Some people have one. I, like it's maybe maybe nobody is is brave enough to say they have one here because they're going to be called out on it. <laughs> but people have these things, right? There, there's a movie made all about it. My wife has one. I know that. See, there we go. There's a list of things that you want to do. You know, you want to maybe, you know, see the Calgary Flames win the Stanley Cup, or you know, see the Riders win another Grey Cup, and uh, you know, all these different ones. All these. You know, maybe go to Europe, I, whatever you want to do. You want to see these things happen, you know, at some point in your life. Well, you know, and you, if, if you have a bucket list, don't worry. Simeon had a bucket list too. But he had one thing on his bucket list. You, you might have a whole bunch of things. Simeon had one thing, just one thing on his bucket list. It was to see the Messiah. See, because as, as, as soon as he saw the Messiah, he's like, man, I'm done. <laughs> can go i i can i can depart in peace i and you know they call it a you know why they call it a bucket list i don't know i didn't look this up like buckets hold a lot of i'm guessing buckets hold a lot of stuff right so you, you put lots of stuff in there Simeon would didn't need a bucket for it I don't, i'm just guessing he just had one thing in his bucket list and he got to do it and he's, he's holding the messiah and he's like i'm done i can go now i can go in peace he was waiting for that this one thing and it finally happened. And he says in there, I don't know if you caught it or not. He says, this happened according to your word. Do you see that? According to your word. See, he gives God credit. Right there, Simeon says, praise but by thanking God for completing his promise. See, according to your word, you promised this would happen. You, you said I would see him. And so now I have, according to your word, he's at peace, knowing that his greatest desire in his life has been achieved. He's satisfied. He can go peacefully and with joy to his death since he goes knowing that the Lord has fulfilled his promise. And not just fulfilled his promise with, with, with Simeon, but he's also going to fulfill his promise with Israel. To, to bring a savior to the world, this, that the kingdom will now come through Jesus, in Jesus. The sense of peace that, that Simeon feels when he finally sees Jesus, I, I, it reminds me of, of what, what had happened of Jacob. In, and we read in Genesis that where he could, he could die in happiness after seeing Joseph again. Genesis 46 verse 30 say that, says this, Israel said to Joseph, now let, me, now let me die since I've seen your face and know that you are still alive. Just a sense of peace and knowing that. If we continue, let's look at the rest of what Simeon said. Verse 30, it says, For my eyes have seen your salvation, that you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation for the Gentiles and glory to your people, Israel. Something cool here. Simeon just boldly proclaims in the temple that Jesus is salvation. Do you see that? Like he just, like this baby, he just says, this is salvation. My eyes have seen your salvation. He, he looks at the baby. He looks at this Messiah that would have been promised to him. And he recognizes God's salvation. 
my eyes have seen your salvation. See, salvation is one way of, of looking even at the, it's like a major theme in the gospel of Luke. He uses this word all throughout his gospel. He says over and over. And in Luke 19, verses 9 and 10, it says this, And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, since he is also a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and save the lost. See, Jesus came to bring salvation. That's, that's why he came. And so Simeon sees Jesus, and he sees salvation. Simeon also said that this baby will, will bring light and glory of salvation, not only to the Jews, but also to the Gentiles. That Jesus will be a savior for all. See, in saying this again, there's these, these reminders of what we read in the Old Testament scriptures. Look at what Isaiah said in, in chapter 49 and verse 52. You can see it on the screen here. This was, these were prophesied years ago, hundreds of years before this, right? Salvation may reach the ends of the earth. All the ends of the earth shall, shall see the, the salvation of God. It wasn't, wasn't just for the Jewish people, but for all people. So Simeon looked on Jesus. He looked at this baby, the Messiah, whom he had waited for, whom he had longed for, and he saw salvation. He saw God's salvation. My eyes have seen your salvation. After Simeon gives a, a, a prophetic word, he's got a word as well for, for, for Mary. He says this in the next few verses. And his father and mother marveled at what was said about him. Verse 34 says, And Simeon blessed them and he said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is appointed for the fall and rising of many in Israel. And for a sign that is opposed, a sword will pierce through your own soul so that thoughts from many hearts may be revealed. So after Simeon's first prophetic words that he gives, verse 33, he tells Mary and Joseph, that, that sorry, he says that Mary and Joseph marveled at what was said. See, prior to this, Mary in Luke chapter 1, verses 26 and 27, and Joseph in the book of Matthew, they had these uh, encounters with, with angels. And the angels um, told them about Jesus, what was going to happen with them. But yet still, they, they, it says, Luke says that they marveled at what Simeon said. So he prophesied, but what he was going to do, how he was going to, you know, this, he was going to be the salvation. And they, and they marveled at it. They, Mary and Joseph both marveled at it. That means that they were, they were, they were astonished. They were amazed. That's, that's this Greek word. To be amazed and astonished. Man, don't all parents just love to be told good things about their kids? Like you, maybe you think you know how great your kids are. And then someone else tells you how, how awesome they are. And you just marvel at it. And you're just amazed. <laughs> Mary and Joseph are, are astonished. Like they knew what was prophesied. The angel had came and told them what, what Jesus was going to do, how great he was going to be. And Simeon comes and he says it. And, and Luke just says they marveled. They marveled at it. It just confirms. It just confirmed for them who Jesus was. Then Simeon goes on. And not all of his prophecies may be positive. Look what he says next. He tells them that Jesus' ministry is going to create a sharp division in the world. There's gonna, it's going to cause some to rise and, and some to fall again. This was prophesied in the Old Testament. Isaiah chapter 8, verse 14. It says, and he will become a sanctuary and a stone of offense and a rock of stumbling to both the house of Israel, a trap and a snare to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. There's going to be some will rise and some will fall. It's going to happen to both of them. It's going to create this division. This division is going to be for those that believe on Jesus and those who, who reject him. And this is going to be, this is going to happen all throughout his ministry. He's going to see those that are, that are, that cling on to him, that believe on him and some that just reject him, that can't, that don't like what he's saying. They see this happening in the early church and we still see it happening today. There are those that are, that are for Jesus, that believe on him. And there are those that just reject Jesus. Simeon just prophesied, just said, hey, it's going to cause like the rise and the fall of many. 
Another aspect of Simeon's prophecy that he gives at the end is, is given directly to Mary. He tells her that she will suffer intense emotional pain, that her soul will be pierced. And it's likely talking about the horrors of watching her son's death. That she'll be there. We know she was there watching the crucifixion, watching the, the, the torture, watching the horror of it. She'll see it. And Simeon alludes to that. See, this is why Jesus came though. This is the salvation that Simeon saw when he looked at the baby. This is the salvation that he saw when he held Jesus, that his death would bring salvation. Simeon, through the Holy Spirit, saw it. And he, he warns Mary that her soul will be pierced when she sees this. Because of this, this is the salvation that he's bringing. This was the, the consolation of, of Israel. This is the, the comfort that they had been waiting for. This is the, the savior that was, that was to come. So when I, when I look at the story of, of Simeon and I, and I see what's happening here, what, what I see is just a, this, this picture of fulfilled expectation, of expectation, of, of, of hope, of, of waiting for something. Simeon was, was told that he would, he would see the Messiah, but that he, he needed to wait again we're not, not told, and I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that he had to wait because he was, he was old when he, when he saw it, or it seems that he was old. But this is a picture of just waiting faithfully. Waiting faithfully, waiting, waiting purposefully, waiting with hope. Simeon just waited. I'm just looking forward to the one thing. I was to see the Messiah. I was to see the one thing that he had, was promised. You, you know, I think, when we think about waiting, it's such a common theme throughout scripture. We see it happening over and over where so many people had to wait all throughout scripture. Abraham, Jacob, Hannah, Moses, David, every had to, so many people had to wait. I like what Hebrew says about Abraham. And thus Abraham, having patiently waited, obtained the promise. Maybe you're here this morning, or you're listening and you're, and you're waiting for something as well. And it's, and it's tough. Maybe you, 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 you're waiting, believing something's going to happen. And you're not sure when it's going to happen. You're just waiting. I don't know where I read this or maybe I just made it up. <laughs> it's always trusting. Hate to, to hear a pastor say that. I didn't, maybe there's three answers that, that God can give to, to prayer. Sometimes he says yes or no. Sometimes he says just wait. And, and I think in, in waiting, like that can be the hardest. Maybe that's the hardest answer that we get from God. We don't like waiting. So we want things to happen right away. We want things to happen instantly. And there can be a fear of having to wait. And I, and I think the fear maybe isn't that it, that it won't happen. I think the fear sometimes is that it's not going to happen when we want it to happen. That's the hard thing about waiting. Because you don't know when it's going to happen, right? We have plans. We have things set out in our mind of what we want. We don't like waiting. But sometimes we're called to wait. Look, waiting isn't easy. For all of us as believers, it's all, about, it's all about trusting in God. You know what it comes down to? It comes down to surrender. Are we, are we willing to surrender what we want, our plans, the way we have it all planned out in our minds? Are we willing to surrender everything and just allow God to be God? Just to allow God to do what, what he wants and, and trust that he knows what's best. Sometimes that's what waiting we need to do. Just, just trust that God knows. And we can just have peace in that, right? We can rest in that. See, one of the things that this passage tells us when we look at it, for Simeon anyway, it just reminds us that, that God sees us in our waiting. That, that he hasn't forgotten us. See, waiting, you know, in life doesn't mean that you've done something wrong. And I think that's important for us to know. If you are called to wait, waiting doesn't mean that you've done anything wrong. 
it's, it's, it's an essential part of life sometimes. Lamentations 3.25 says this, the Lord is good to those who wait for him. It's this essential appointed part of Christian life, just waiting. So, so whether you've got this specific thing that you're waiting for, you're longing for, or, or maybe you're just like, like Simeon, you're just yearning to see Jesus. Simeon shows us that that waiting, again, doesn't mean you've done something wrong. But sometimes God just asks us to wait sometimes. And it, come down, it comes down to just trusting him. It, come down, it comes down to just surrendering what we want. I think it's safe to say that that Simeon wasn't thinking that a helpless baby born to like the poorest of the poor parents would have been the answer to all his hopes. Would have been the answer to everything he'd been waiting for. That that baby would have been an answer. I think he probably thought something different was going to happen. But as he came into the temple that day, full of the spirit, he saw, his eyes saw the salvation. So what Israel was longing for, what they, were, what they, what they thought they needed was different as well. So what Israel, what they most needed was restoration with God. That's what we need too. See, that's, that's what really what we need is restoration with God. See, we were created by God and we can't be fully and completely um, completed by anything else apart from God himself. So even the things that we wait for, things that we're longing for, all of these things aren't going to complete us. They're, they're just things right? Is it maybe a job you're waiting for? Or a relationship? Or is it prosperity? Or success? Or a new house? All of these things maybe that we're, we're waiting for aren't going to bring us fulfillment. And I think that's the thing. We, we, we can't be looking for stuff and waiting for things to bring us fulfillment. When we know we can find fulfillment in Jesus, that we know that only fulfillment is found in Jesus. So we can't be looking elsewhere. We've got to be looking to him for it, right? I mean, you may think that we need all these things. You need this new house. You need this, this extra money in your bank account. You need bigger family. You need all this stuff. But really what we need is, is, is Jesus. We need, to be, we need to be made right with Jesus. Restoration is what we need. It's only this Messiah that Simeon waited for, this baby born to live a life that, 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 that we were supposed to live, die the death that we were condemned to die, to die in our place. Only, that's the only thing that can fill this hole. It's the only thing that can bring us that fulfillment that we're longing for. So like, like Simeon, we, we rejoice in his coming. We rejoice that Jesus will come again. And we celebrate that Jesus came. That salvation came for us. That this baby, through this baby, God was providing a way for us to be saved. And this way for us to be saved wasn't about this set of rules that we have to follow. That we follow these rules and, and you just hope that someday maybe you made it. Because we know we never will. It's not about us. It's not about what we need to do. See, the salvation that Simeon looked upon wasn't based on us earning anything, but it was based on this free gift that came for us all. A free gift for all of those who would repent and believe. That's why Jesus came. And so Simeon waited for this. And like Simeon, we wait too. We wait for Jesus to return, that our eyes will see him once again in this new heaven and this new earth. We wait for this. This is what we wait for as well. We wait for Jesus to come. And so if you're awaiting, if you're waiting for something to happen and maybe God has told you you need to wait, my, 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 my heart, my prayer for you is that, that this thing that you're waiting for wouldn't be the thing that you're looking to for fulfillment, wouldn't be the thing that's going to bring you this ultimate joy, but you would see that you would see this to bring you your joy, that, that Jesus would bring you your fulfillment and everything that you're longing for because it can only be found in him. But we long and we wait for Jesus to return. And one day he will. Come thou long expected Jesus. Let's pray.
Heavenly Father, thank you for this morning, and we are just grateful that you came, that you came and we, and we, we wait for you to return again. We thank you that you bring us that ultimate joy, that you bring us that complete fulfillment, and that we wait for other things on earth, and that's okay to, to wait for things that bring us excitement and joy, but you bring us that ultimate joy and that ultimate fulfillment that only you can have. And so we praise you and we thank you for that. Amen.